Welcome to the girls. We're at Wiltshire University and I had Janine put to work trying to figure out an equation. And I think, did you get the right answer? I think I got the right answer. I'm just working here. We're talking about inventors today, but it looks like in my equation with this beam that it's going to fail because this is 36,000 and this actually equals 38,000. How about that? All right. Well, I I'm a genius. We to, she's a freaking I'm genius. I'm a freaking genius. We always say we're, the kids are we're actually going to need a genius today, and he actually is our cousin, my he cousin. Is. He is. And he did this whole equation thing, right? Exactly. So we're at Wilkes University in Pennsylvania. Yes. And we um, we're everyone every day. Every one of us uses inventions. Mm -hmm. So we don't always know who invented it or how it was invented, but a lot of things are invented by everyday people for everyday reasons. Yeah, did you ever think of, you know, I wish this had a piece for that, or I wish this had a piece for that. Yeah. Why didn't I invent the shoelace? Darn it, people the wear shoelace. shoelaces. Shoelaces, or the flip-flop, or, I don't know, the lip gloss, or something. Yeah, Maybe you would I need to invent gloss. something with, with our guest today. That's going to be my goal for this year. We're going to invent something. Maybe he'll let me invent something with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, girl if related. If you're going to strike a rich Janine, you better stick with your lottery tickets. How about this invention? That's a good one. Now, normally I, we don't play the lottery, but I figured we'll get those tickets in. Well, Who Eddie, invented this? Eddie's dad, I think, invented them because oh, you're right. um, our guest, his dad, always sends us lottery tickets. He does. For every birthday, anniversary, every single occasion. He's so thoughtful. He sends them to everybody he knows. So he must send out like 10,000 of these a year. Yes. And I don't know that anybody ever really won anything really big, but we're going to win does. today. We have the scratch offs. Mm, we'll see so, if we win. I don't know. We have all kind of inventors. We have, uh, do you know who invented the, uh, the cotton gin? Eli Whitney. Eli Whitney. And who invented the light bulb? Edison. Thomas Edison. All right. Do you know who invented the adjustable wheelchair? I do. And you're going to find out when we come back because we're going to meet Dr. Edward Bednorris. So stay with us. We have an exciting show for you. We're going to get to meet some of his students and Wilkes. see some of the other inventions. All right, check it out. Welcome back to the girls. Today we are at Wilkes University in Pennsylvania. And it is my great honor to introduce our guest to you. This is Dr. Edward T. Bednarz the <laughs> third. Did I get it right? You got Everything's it. <laughs> correct. Inventor extraordinaire. And you are um, going to show us some of the great things that you invented today. But first of all, let's step back okay. to when you were a little kid. Step back. And you didn't start out as an inventor. You, uh, you always had an inquisitive mind. So you were taking apart toasters and can openers and just about anything you could. What, what was so intriguing about all this to you? What started it? Just always wanted to see how something worked. Uh, you know, luckily my parents didn't mind if I took apart a radio and <laughs> couldn't get it back together as a kid. Oops, <laughs> exactly. So now you're married to yes. Heather, your beautiful wife, yes. and you have two children. Mm -hmm. And your son, Edward IV, of course, is also inquisitive. He was always with those Legos, like from the time that he could pick anything up. So is he going to follow in your footsteps, you think? I think so, mm -hmm. yeah. He's, <laughs> he's a little Eddie, really, yeah. he is. Yeah. We, we have the whole family involved in the creations, as you're going to learn later from some of the inventions that we had. But you are um, you are someone who has a very inquisitive mind. You, you've worked in the military as well. And so you want to explain one of the first inventions that you had here that you worked on for the military? Yeah, so th this one's... Um, a safety brace for a radar antenna. So you can picture a radar antenna like a, a big dump truck bed that goes up and down. Okay. So this clamps around and it, it keeps it from coming down so someone could safely work on the motor and uh, it'll keep them safe. So this is not the actual invention. Uh, this the mold? Kind of like a mold? It's, it's, it's more of a prototype. So this okay. is made of a, a plastic, so it's called 3D printing. So this is a way that we could just, um, same way we could print paper, we could print something physically. So this is a great way we could test if something will fit before we actually go ahead and make it out of metal. Now what made you come up with this? Is it something that you were around the equipment and decided, you know, or do they, did they give you that assignment? Yeah, so it was something while I was working for the government, and uh, there was an unfortunate incident where someone was was killed working on the equipment. So myself and uh, a couple of my team members, we, we came up with a way to easily um, clamp it onto place, and we we had to do the engineering and the calculations, and you know, there's a lot of math before you can actually make something for military use. But uh, then we got 
it patented, and now it's being used uh, all through the military. So we're excited about it. Saving right, lives, so really. I right. Mean, so, so when you so said about safety. all, it's a safety brace. Okay. Yes. All right. When you said about all the math and everything involved, so you don't actually just draw something up. There's so much math involved. Like, so what was the equation for this? In other words, like, how do you start out? Someone out there watching is just like they have no idea. Like, I would have an idea. So it, engineers use math as, as our tools, to, you know, math, physics, calculus, you know, so these, these are all our tools to, to determine whether something will break. So uh, essentially we're, we're calculating the stress on that. Okay. So the stress is the force distribution per area and... I know this stuff too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and there's, there's many years of training, that's why it takes uh, four years to get a bachelor's degree in engineering because you have to learn step by step, Okay. You so, know, so you how do you actually did, design something like did that? Did you get a patent for this then? Yes, yeah, that was patented so for the government. So that's for the government. Mm -hmm. So the patent, does the patent cover the formula or does it cover the actual item? It covers the invention. The yeah, invention so itself. Yeah, you, you could patent something without even doing the calculations on it, actually, mm. if you have an idea. Uh, you know, so even someone without an engineering background, you could come up with a patent if you say, okay, I think this is a better way to... Now this, this Eddie, this you did under your job with the government mm -hmm. through the military. So when they're using these, it's not like you're getting like a percentage of, of that for this. But if you no, have no. an invention yes. uh, that, that it doesn't involve, you know, it's just on independent, you could actually make money on it, correct? Yeah, so okay. I guess uh, later on we'll talk about the Yay, <laughs> some other see inventions. Some of his other inventions that he's but, made. But either way, even if you're employed by a company or in my case employed by the government and the government paid for the patent and they own the rights to it, I'm still an inventor, so they that's can't awesome. they can't take that away from you. You're, right. That's your intellectual property. You, you know, my name's on the plaque. Awesome. <laughs> you know, I was the inventor. Was this the first thing you've invented that, that was patented? That was okay. my very first patent. So, Here I, was it so is. I was so happy uh, when that came. Yeah, the Eddie brace. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a name? The safety brace. Safety brace. Yeah. Maybe right. we'll come up with a better name for there, it. I think he's yeah. on in the marketing <laughs> department. He's in the engineering, yeah. so uh, we would have to come up I'll with need, that. I'll need your, He'll need our knowledge. The girls help. I'll need the girls help. Yeah, it should be called the braced. ED, brace, or brace, ED. brace, brace, ED. Brace. I like that. Okay, okay well, well there we go. There was that. <laughs> I'm going to get it like this cute <laughs> little, <Copyright. laughs> it looks like a, like a little wind chime to me. So now, th these are things you do in the classroom, right? Yeah, so th these were classroom projects invented by students. Uh, so oh. they have very brilliant creative minds and it, it's so, yeah, it's so fun to watch what, what they could come up with. So this is all using the 3D printing technology that we have, okay. have here at Wilkes. Um, so this is a, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> the Eiffel Tower. That's just an example of, of how you could 3D print something. And of great engineering. Of great engineering, that's right. So the students came up with these different ways. And these are all 3D printed parts. So something that would be almost nearly impossible to make physically with traditional manufacturing methods. Wow. They could just use a, a printer that lays down plastic and voila. <laughs> yeah, so whoever invented the laser printer, of course, they're that enabled you to create all of these as well. Right. So one helps the other. It's like a chain link. Well, so let's go back a little bit yes. about um, your background because, you, as we said, you started working um, in the military, but then you came here to Wilkes and you just got tenure, right? I did, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy for that. <laughs> uh, I actually came to Wilkes 21 years ago as a freshman. I went to school here, I got my bachelor's, uh, worked for the Army for 12 years, and now kind of came full circle and I'm back at. Wilkes University teaching, I and I love it. And you graduated from Bishop Hafey? Bishop Hafey High School. Right, uh, as the valedictorian of your class? I think I was the highest male student. I think I got Highest male student. But he got perfect <laughs> on his SATs. We perfect know SAT yeah. scores. Yeah. And you got bragging, full scholarship bragging to right. Wilkes? I did, yeah. So my mom and I were just talking the other day that I almost went to Lafayette and uh, was, was accepted there, but then got the phone call that I was getting a scholarship from Wilkes because I, I um, won a math test. and. Uh, then and got a scholarship, are. and I'm happy I came here. I, I love it at Wilkes. Yeah. And now you're you're saving lives in the in the military. That's neat. So from this job, when you moved into the engineering department, um, I know that you have not only one patent here, but you have other patents with your students. We're going to meet them on the show yes. today. Yeah, yeah. And I'm that's I'm why excited we're here. To so how many patents do you have all together? Four patents issued okay. and one patent pending. All right. So Pat I can't wait to see what he what he invented with the students. All right, guys, we'll stay with us because when we come back, we're going to get to meet some of the students and we're going to see a few of the other inventions here. How about an adjustable wheelchair? Isn't that a great one? You'll get to see that too.
We're inventing things here at Wilkes University on the girls. We're on location and we're really excited to be talking about some inventions that were made here in Pennsylvania by my cousin, I could say that right, Dr. Edward T. Bednarz III. I love saying your name, it's just so long. Thank you. And uh, we have students on today because they helped you with some of these yes. inventions and we have Murph with us, right? So we're excited to uh, talk to you about working with Eddie. Yeah. How was he as a professor? He was great. How long was he? He was great. Yeah, that's right. And you actually went on and got a job in engineering already, right? Correct, yes. Yes, right. I worked so at Cornell did, Cooks in the Mountaintop. Did pretty good, Ed. Did pretty good. He was a great student and a great engineer. So what was it that you worked on with Dr. B? Uh, we worked on an adjustable wheelchair. That was my senior project, and we moved forward with this as an invention. So, No pun intended, moving forward. Where did the idea come from for an adjustable wheelchair? I mean, out, you know, mother, the mother of necessity, I mean, <laughs> out of necessity is the mother of invention, right? So the who idea, needed a wheelchair? The idea came from my wife, Heather. Uh, it, was, it was all her idea. She works as an occupational therapist, and she saw a need to have um, variable adjustment within a wheelchair. They only come in discrete sizes and she said that that would uh, be beneficial for the patients and, and different facilities. So, so describe the wheelchair. Yeah. So the wheelchair, uh, we, wanted to, we did a little research and we found out that the basic sizes that we wanted to expand through was 14 inches to 22 inches. That would be both male and female waist that would grow okay. as you gained weight. So that was the average range that we thought we could accommodate everybody's needs. With. So it starts from a child all the way up to an adult, so you don't have to go out and buy a new wheelchair, is that what you're saying? Correct, correct. Oh my God, that is a fabulous invention. And looking at it, it seems to me that without even knowing that it's an adjustable wheelchair, you kept it within the same standard size, which, I mean, it's not clunky looking and whatever. So where did you start with this? So, well, Heather came to us, I guess, as uh, we'd be the, she would be the customer and we would have been in the business. Okay. So she came with the idea and we just ran with it. We went with it and started working on it as our senior project and it just grew from there. And how long did it take you? Uh, it took us a year, roughly a year. Okay. We had it completed and then we decided we were going to go as a group and move forward and uh, obtain a patent. So, so how many ups and downs were there? Oh, very many. Very many. Yeah. Stumbling blocks. Oh, uh, the stress of school and trying to figure out what to do on the on the wheelchair itself it was it was crazy many revisions done so, so now are these are these being used now the the wheelchairs not currently okay not yeah. currently yeah we we were fortunate to have the patent issued so that was kind of major milestone and now next step would be hopefully license it and sell it to a a manufacturer to distribute our product and Make a little money. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, we got to make the money now. Okay, so right. who owns the patent then? Would you own the patent? We, I, uh, we're all in partnership. It's myself, Heather, Murph, and three, three other, other students. And how about yeah. your little son, Nicolo? <laughs> he's probably the one that gave Heather the time to be able to sit there and think about it. She's rocking him and she's thinking, geez, you know, what could we use here? <laughs> yeah, we'll give him credit too. Yeah, so. It's all, all in the family. family. Yeah. He'll be, I said, here, off, uh, during uh, the break, I said he'll be in the marketing department, so then you'll have everyone in cahoots there. He can do all the That's marketing, right. the packaging, the branding. Trialing. You know, yeah, exactly, exactly. So the wheelchair itself, as we look at it, it adjusts, um, the legs adjust too, and it, it adjusts inward and outward? It's so adjusts with width-wise. It would start okay. from the smallest to the largest and just expand. Okay. Horizontally, and that might also be good too. Not only if you're gaining weight, but if you know if you're going down aisles in like the grocery store, or you know the the smaller aisles of like a park or anywhere. I know, even I know with right. you, with strollers, that should be your next invention. That's right. Now we move on to strollers. Don't take that at home. They're already working on it. <laughs> well, let's just say that I was the first one with the strollers because having you and Sammy as twins, they only had side by side strollers right. at one time. So I can only go down certain aisles, and then someone did come up with the invention with the piggyback stroller. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit slimmer. But now you can do great. like different, like mm -hmm. make them narrow, kind of, you know. So what's next on the docket for your invention? Did this stir you to start thinking of some things on your own? Most definitely, most definitely. Oh, uh, I'm looking at a few things, uh, a couple ideas like uh, tables that I have to, that divide up and you can fold up and move as well that just you can take from a shelf into a table and just all in one. Oh my gosh, so, that's a, so it's like all convertible furniture. All convertible furniture. And you correct. work for a company right now where you're doing garage doors. Garage doors, correct. So correct. your things are up and down all the time. All the time. <laughs> but I'm pumped. I, I'm so excited when I hear uh, former students coming up with ideas. They're, you know, it's like my 24-year-old son right here. Oh, <laughs> isn't that nice? Well, you're just about 
old enough to have a 24 year old son. Oh! <laughs> no. He doesn't look it though. He looks like he's still in college. He still Thank is you. in college. Heather, yeah. always been Heather, in college. Keeps them, Heather keeps them young. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so um, from here, I guess, what would some of your, um, what would your opinion be to maybe someone out there who's thinking of coming into school uh, for an, engi an engineering degree, if you had any advice for them? Keep your mind open and just go for it. Anything you can do, anything you can think of, you can do. It's just you got to take the time and put the effort forward. So. All right. Use your imagination. And, That's right. Uh, create, create, create. Right? Work on that stroller. That's one of you. <laughs> you got it. So you have one more student that's here with us today. Yes. And we're actually in your lab, right? So if you look around, there's all kinds of different inventions going on here. It's the chaos. So. <laughs> yeah. You know, walking in here, yeah. I felt like I was walking inside your mind. Because <laughs> knowing you growing up, this is just how you have everything laid out. And yeah. There's always something going on and something interesting. Thank you, Murph, for sharing all your experiences with us, with the inventions with Dr. B. And now we're going to talk with one of your other students, and that is Autumn. All right, we have another invention and another inventor now with us. As mom said, we have Autumn here and an, another wheelchair, right? Another, another wheelchair. Yeah. Heather brilliant idea. Behind every invention is a woman. I'm, you know, That's I right. see the Agreed. repetition of this. Agreed. Okay, so let's talk That's about right. it. Okay, so um, this project is a pressure redistribution device. So essentially for targeting patients who have trouble moving themselves, who are like, especially elderly patients who can't uh, physically adjust themselves as much. This senses areas of pressure if they're slumped over and then has, uses a system of air bladders that will physically shift their center of gravity to prevent pressure ulcers from forming. I love it. Why don't they put that in cars? You know, you're driving along and you're like <laughs> pressure on one side, pressure on the other. On the way up what, here, my mom was complaining because she, she's like, your seats are too hard, which I've never heard before. They're leather seats. But anyway, <laughs> here, my seats, the seats are too hard because you're sitting in one position and you, what was it doing? Push on a nerve? On, on my coccyx bones. But yeah. you're talking about patients. Now, patients who have had strokes or whatever, they yes. really can't. They're very much immobilized. So picture yourself sitting in a chair for maybe three or four hours that they get them out of bed to sit. Exactly. And what you're saying is so true because you could only go over and adjust a patient so many times, but if this chair senses that, and it, what does it do? It just elevates them yes. and relieves so the pressure points. It, sh it physically shifts them using air bladders. So, so it's like the air mattress they use on a bed? Kind of, yes. That's awesome. So how did you come up with that idea now? Um, it's actually mostly Heather again. <laughs> uh, again with Heather. She doesn't want to be on camera today, but I'm putting her picture all over this. It's going to be like the Heather show. Well, Heather works with, in occupational therapy, right? Yes. Okay, so now what, how did you go from there? Um, so essentially, we've just kind of spitballed a lot of ideas. And originally, we weren't even targeting the, uh, the pressure distribution system. We just knew it. we wanted something medical, and it turned into this. And after a lot of work and a lot of uh, conversations, especially late night conversations, since our schedules were all over the place. Drinking. <laughs> no. Um, this actually came out to be something that we were all very interested in. And I personally love the medical field, so this idea really struck home with me. My mom's a nurse, so I was so excited to always have that constant talking with her. And you're helping millions exactly. of people with this millions Hopefully, and yes. millions of people so autumn it's just i had one more question about like how does the chair know when to move so essentially it uses load sensors to sense the amount of pressure in that area and then it has an electrical system that actually uses like an arduino uno which is a microcomputer microprocessor that will actually use an interval of time so if it's this much pressure over an, uh, this much interval of time based on the patient's weight It'll I mean, announce that as like a danger zone because there's a certain limit for when pressure ulcers can form. And then it'll use that timing to actually indicate the chair to shift. Is that, and how is it uh, ran like by energy or do you have to, is it battery up or how does the chair? We use an external battery for okay. it, yes. Okay. Well, so did you have to learn like the medical part of it first before you went into the yes, pressure Yes, there was part? a lot of research involved, um, a lot, reading a lot of different stories about the different stages of pressure ulcers as well. So I really got to dive in depth about the medical aspect behind it. And then we had great um, electrical engineers on our team who were able to do all the programming for it. And so what was your part in this, Dr. B? <laughs> kind of coordinating all the pieces. Go yeah. team so, go. Yeah. Go team go. <laughs> you know, so we had uh, you know, Heather coming in with her medical experience and then we had uh, Autumn and another mechanical engineer with, with their experience and the electrical engineer. So just how all the pieces will move and finish up within uh, the state of 
the two semesters before our senior projects was up and you know, we're, we're so excited and we, we actually made it a, a pressure distribution system when we filed for the patent. Mm -hmm. It originally started out as a wheelchair but with maybe uh, in the future it could be applied to other Exactly. Uh, Just like, like what about a bed? Yeah. I mean, the a mattress, be it in a bed or a sofa, right. a recliner. Right. Right. If you if you get surgery and you you need to sit for a while and you can't get up, you know, sometimes you're you're sitting for days. You know, that's a, that's a great. Even people sitting at their desks, inventors. If you're <laughs> sitting there, you know, you sometimes get sore like that too. So, did you involve your mommy in all of this? Because she's not a really. I did talk to her about just different ideas and things that she had. But she was more so just really excited and rooting for us yeah. in the background. She was a good cheerleader. Yes, like we have a lot she of was. cheerleaders here today. Nice. Well, congratulations. That's Thank really you. exciting. And I think it'll be put to good use once you get your, your patents already done. So now we're looking to license it, correct? Now, now's, the, now's the waiting game. Okay. You know, we, we filed for the patents. And, and now we wait. It's pat, patent oh. pending. So. Oh. All right. So <laughs> anyone out there watching, if you have a um, medical company, and you're looking for some geniuses to create for you. They already have two great things for you. So where can they get in touch with you? Uh, they, they can get in touch with me uh, through Wilkes. I could provide my contact info. And okay. yeah, We have information up on the screen. You could contact us as well. Yeah. And uh, do you have something in the, in the workings now? You have something else that you're keeping under wraps? <laughs> <laughs> Not currently. Uh, the baby's kind of keeping us busy. But <laughs> the baby's keeping you. That baby's going to make you on something maybe, else too. Maybe, we'll, sure. maybe we'll have a, another a baby. good invention. Another baby. That's the next That'll be another, <laughs> That'll be another And again, who gets the credit? <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you? Um, I'm currently working and then in my spare time I try to tinker more stuff with the Arduino because I really like that it has so many different options you could do from a pressure redistribution system to drones and different toy marketing as well. Drones so. a big one. Yes. For us you can create something again or invent something for our TV station. Of course. Exactly. Drones are really yes. important right now. I mean there's a lot of licensing licensing that goes on yeah. with it too but and permits but that's a really good one. Okay so we have Dr. B and you have your two former students. Is that your patent group? <laughs> and Heather. Do you have a name for it? And Heather. Yeah. And Heather. The and geniuses. The yeah. the group? I don't know. You? The freaking geniuses. <laughs> There you go. There you go. I so like we it. can name it the, the genius. Thank you for joining us. And it was nice. It's a beautiful campus if you've never been to Wilkes University. It really is. When we were walking through, I believe it was Franklin Street, uh, we were walking through and uh, all the kids were, it's, it's a nice day here. And they were laying out, hanging out, just chilling because it's, it's probably finals week for you guys. Yes. <laughs> it's a beautiful campus if you ever get an opportunity to, to visit it or, or if you're involved in the engineering department, really check it out, right? Check Absolutely. out Wilkes, right? <laughs> Yes, for sure. Well, thank you for watching. We hope that you enjoyed the show. We hope that maybe we've inspired you. And we're going to give you a little look into what we have here in northeastern and central Pennsylvania with an inventor who's going to go down in history right in our own backyard. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time.